What are we gonna do? Told you. We're gonna hang out. I'm watching a movie. Exactly. Karate, just something that I created. Gonna take some pictures. I learned that kick, you know, 40 years ago or 30 years of Alexander Emelianenko, the most handsome man to compete in MMA. Well, probably the nicest guy to ever do MMA? No? The most honest? He's Fedor Emelianenko's brother. Alexander is often overlooked because of his older brother, but in his prime, he wasn't bad. He might not have fought the same caliber of opponents or had as an impressive win streak as Fedor did, but that didn't mean he couldn't scrap. Alexander was born when the family had already moved to Stary Oskol. Like his brother, Alex took a shine to Sambo when he accompanied Fedor to practice. Under the tutelage of Varanov, the man who would assume the role of mentor, the brothers developed their Sambo skills with Alexander also getting into judo, boxing, and wrestling. Whereas Fedor was straight and narrow, Alex was the opposite. He got into a lot of street fights as well as just being a handful. Like his brother, he did study to be an electrician, and he did graduate in the end despite being transferred for acting like a dick. Alex also proved his worth in Sambo, snatching up gold in world, European, and Russian championships. At age 22, Alex made his pro MMA debut at Pride Bushido 1, earning himself the title as the youngest fighter to debut in Pride. Alexander made short work of his first three opponents, which consequently led him to a fight with Krokop at Pride Final Conflict in 2004. This would be his first real test. The two went at it, exchanging heavy blows, hanging out in the danger zone. And because of Alex's size, pundits predicted that it would be impossible for Krokop to land that patented head kick. Well, Krokop showed everyone that you don't have to be JCVD to land ridiculous head kicks and KO'd the Grim Reaper. Alex came right back though and went on a 5 fight win streak beating guys like James Thompson after his famous bum rush and Polish gold medalist in judo Pavel Nastula. In a back and forth grappling match where Alex was the one that submitted Nastula. At Pride Total Elimination Absolute, Alex entered the heavyweight Grand Prix and faced Josh Barnett in the opening round. Alex was outstriking Barnett, but in the second round, Barnett got a takedown and was spamming the Americana, which prompted Alex to tap to what looked like some kind of injury. Alexander's final fight in Pride was against Sergei Karitanov, a former training partner of his brother's. The two were pretty evenly matched, with Karitanov landing slightly better shots, dropping Alex, but Alex managed to keep his composure and later landed shots of his own rocking Sergey and then swarming him, getting the win. Alexander ended his pride run at 7-2, which wasn't bad at all. Of course, being the brother of the Great One, people had pretty high expectations. For the next few years, Alex bounced around organizations, fighting in Bodog, M1, and Pro FC, to name a few. At Too Hot to Handle, Pride and Honor, Alex faced Fabricio Verdum, and was submitted early in the fight when it went to the ground by a sneaky arm triangle choke. Verdum would of course go on to shatter Fedor's aura of invincibility with a triangle choke a few years later. After his loss to Verdum, Alex went on a knockout spree, KOing six of his next eight wins. Pounds in 13 years, and now one. This is scheduled for three. Oh, solid shot to the temple, apparently drops him. For this fight, him and Makako said he's ready to stand and trade. And oh, the nice knees knee. and the hands. Santos in Siri. Alexander Emelianenko letting his hands go. Oh, he's in big trouble now. Santos is finished, and that's the stop. Соперника прежде всего. Соперник и руки покороче и уронил он его в итоге. Смотрим главное событие вечера Александр Емельяненко и Эдди Бенсон. Емельяненко Портер не получился. Alexander 
To be honest though, most of these guys didn't look that impressive. They seemed a bit timid and some of them were just stand-ins for Alex's heavy bag. And when Alex knocked out a guy named Eddie Bingstead with what looked like nothing more than air, people got a talking. Alexander just stood there looking confused while Bingstead was going for an Oscar winning performance. The whole thing was sus as fuck. He did manage to beat guys like Dan Bobish and Konstantin Gluhov. You might not recognize the names, but Bobish at one time was King of the Cage super heavyweight champ, and Gluhov is a decorated kickboxer as well as mixed martial artist, winning belts in both kickboxing and MMA at one time. Alex's KO spree came to an end when he had back-to-back -back losses to Peter Graham and Magomed Malikov. In the Peter Graham fight, Alex's legs were getting beat up and he looked kind of out of shape. During this time, Alex signed with promotions like Affliction and a Polish promotion called KSW, where he was supposedly gonna fight legendary strongman Marius Bujanowski, but he had problems obtaining the license to fight because of medical issues. There were rumors going around that he had hepatitis B or C or both. Of course, Alex claimed that, you know, he was the picture of health. Later, another Polish promotion called Strefa Walks made public some tests they had made on Alex that showed he was clean. But those tests were never verified by anyone who mattered, so I guess they weren't valid. By this time, Alex's heavy drinking was starting to catch up. He managed to win his next four, but then suffered a loss to the snowman via his favorite north-south choke in a fight that Alex was actually winning. After the Monson loss, Alex retired from MMA in 2012. When Alex came out of retirement in 2013, his first fight back was against MMA legend, <laughs> I mean, laughingstock, Bob Sapp. It was a classic sap fight. He threw a few haymakers that everyone could see from miles away, and as soon as he started to get hit, he tapped. A few months after his sap win, Alex was found guilty of raping his housekeeper. He stole her passport and forced her to take drugs when the incident took place. He got four and a half years for that and a $1,000 fine. He was released on parole in 2016. There's been a lot of controversy surrounding Emelianenko's tattoos. You know, if Alex is a Vori or not. Vori is basically the name given to Russian mobsters. We can sit here all day and speculate about it. Truth is, Alex has always denied any affiliation with the Russian mob. His story is that he just likes tattoos. And in later years, he did cover some of them up. Is he in the mob? I don't know. Does he have mob connections? Probably. He's a celebrity in Russia that's been in prison. I'd be surprised if he didn't at least know some of those people from that life. If you guys want to know more about the Russian mob, go watch Eastern Promises with Vico Mortensen. Anywho, when Alex got out of prison, he signed with RCC and Fight Club Akhmat. He had a decent run knocking out a few guys, and in one video, Alex had been boozing or popping pills all night when his buddies show up and literally have to help him out of bed. He ran a few clicks and did some shadow boxing before going into the cage and having a fight. This was nothing new, with some fighters criticizing Alex and his inability to take fights because of his drinking. Even though he was drunk half the time, he did manage to beat Gabriel Gonzaga in 2018. Gonzaga got some takedowns and was on top, but then in round two, Alex got a second wind and TKO'd Gonzaga. In 2019, Alex got in trouble again while driving shit-faced. He crashed into a few cars and led the cops on a chase. You know, fun stuff. Because of all the tomfoolery, Alex was relegated to take fights with people like G-Gun, who's a Russian hip-hop artist. But in the end, that fight didn't even happen either. So in a weird twist, Ramzan Kadyrov, who's the founder of Fight Club Akhmat and head of the Chechen Republic, challenged Alex to a fight in either boxing or MMA. Fortunately for Alex, that match never took place. I don't think it's good for your health to fight a despot that has been accused of kidnapping and torture. Imagine if Dana, good to be white, would challenge Stipe to a fight, and if he lost, 
he would have him abducted and waterboarded. Anywho, not long after that, Alex got dropped from RCC and Akmat. His most recent fights were with promotions called ACA and AMC, where he got beaten by both of his opponents with relative ease. I read an interview with Fedor Emelianenko where he said that Alexander was incredibly gifted when it came to fighting, but because of his lack of discipline, he was unable to break through to that elite level. That's what I see too, a big guy with big potential and talent, but just unable to control his demons. Lengthy prison sentences, being in the mob, killing a bear with a spear. In my opinion, the mysteries that surround Alexander the person far exceed his achievements in the cage. Of course, being in the shadow of a giant like Fedor was probably never easy. Whatever the case is, his is the classic story of what could have been. And because we have Fedor, we can actually see what could have been. Thanks for tuning in guys, please like, subscribe and all that shit.